extensively upgraded and revived frame, chassis, the bodywork, as well as engine. We're getting to the recent past of Sherco, so I'm pretty sure that most of you remember the latest conquests of the brand. But do you know that 2019 was also the year that Sherco decided to make a serious investment in one of the biggest markets in the world? Yes, I am talking about the United States. Sherco in France was looking for uh, more focus and growth in the United States being such a you know, a, a market for most companies globally. The United States is usually a growth market for, oh, for, for sure, anyone. For sure. So if you ask 10 people on the street who are dirt bike enthusiasts or off-road enthusiasts or, you know, supercross, motocross, enduro, I'm going to combine them into one and say, who is Sherco? I bet you early on it might have been two out of the 10 that could say, oh, that's a brand from France. They, you know, they do this and trials back. Yeah. So it has been our job to really disrupt the market and, and and we're trying to be creative. We don't have the budgets of the big brands, certainly, uh, especially yeah. here in the United States. We're a single importer. We're not Sherco as, as a whole. We're the importer. And yes, we work hand in hand with, with France, but uh, you know, the, the, we'll get to this, I'm sure, but the race team has been a, a great tool for us and, and that the proof is in the pudding because these, these, these bikes are fantastic out of the creek. You know, some people say they're ready to race our factory line really is ready to race with the bikes are great but nobody knew of them and nobody could get them so we were doing demos where we get people riding the bikes we've we've grown our dealer network significantly thanks to our sales team they've gone from maybe 30 active dealers to now we're over 85 approaching 100 since we've just opened california nice so in that short of a time becoming a reference in the u.s is a true challenge but Cherko seems up to it the first block is in place, with the creation of the Factory One Sherco team and by signing one of the most valuable riders in the field. Cody Webb joined the team to race in Hard Enduro, while the Baylor brothers led the show in GNTC and Enduro. And the Factory Run, uh, Trial and Enduro, it's basically like the Sherco Racing Factory team. It's the racing structure of uh, Sherco USA, but uh, that's independent than the than the distribution part because uh, a strategy was to implement a super large team for the first year to show that uh, share coke is competitive on the market because uh, you speak to a typical guy in a gncc and you say oh, you know share coke? Yeah. Say, oh, what is it? Ice cream? Uh, <laughs> uh, it certainly is risk reward for us as a young company, as a young brand, uh, especially on the GNCC side with the Baylor's. The the, the 450 uh, really it, it's it's unknown. It hasn't been raced at a at a world level outside of now with with rally, but that's you know kind of a different uh, setup uh, entirely. But so we 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 put a eggs in a risky basket, and it's. It was proving well, aside from the one fluke that we had in Florida with the two mechanicals, a battery, I think it was, and, and a gas thing, because we don't have aftermarket parts, so our quick fill had, uh, had uh, failed on us. And so besides that, I mean, they were running, you know, close to the front, and, and Stuart was about to go. Uh, he was right on the leader's uh, he, was get, yeah. he was about to get the win. It's yeah, probably yeah. one of the most frustrating second places yeah, that yeah. I, I think he'll have in his yeah. Game. The rest yeah, of his yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we accomplished some goals. We've now podiumed in GNCC, and now we're looking for the win and then to fight for championships. And that's across the board. And, and Cody certainly plans to compete overseas. I think Erzberg being canceled is a, is a big bummer because we really think he could have had a shot to be the first yeah, American yeah. to win. Uh, we think he'd, he'd be set up to do so. You know, he wants to uh, challenge for the uh, uh, Enduro Cross, Enduro Cross, sorry, and Super Enduro in Europe. He, he was planning on doing that in the last round for Poland that starts the new season. So, uh, but yes, and, and challenge for championships there. Um, again, it's brought a bunch of credibility to the brand, uh, not just in the United States. You see a lot of our distributors globally that will reshare a lot of our content. Uh, a lot of our social media postings and things, and, and they'll use the photos from our race advertising and things. So we're certainly impacting Sherco on a global level as well. And you know, it's 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 a big investment in terms of what our ownership has to to put in to do this. But I, I do really believe they they see 
that it gives us that credibility and, and it's also improving the marketplace as a whole in that you're seeing so many aftermarket companies now producing Shirko products that you didn't yeah. see before. So uh, there's that impact as well and, and, and benefits. So that was always a question from consumers. Well, okay, now I see it's a proven bike. I, I love it. I've ridden it, but can I get that part that I needed? And so we have the ability to fulfill that. We have the warehouse in Kentucky that if the dealership doesn't stock it, or they, they should be stocking it, but if they're out of it, they can call us through their, the Sherco network, get that part delivered so that person can go racing that weekend. So a lot has changed that way. But you know, the emphasis on the team from both the Enduro and the, the trials has been around, but Enduro especially, it's just such a big marketing tool for us. And, and you know, we understand that, and, you know, taking Cody from factory KTM is such a coup for us. Uh, the Baylor's coming from KTM again. It just, it kind of sent sort of this shot across the bow, as we say here in the United States of like this, and people kind of joked about us early on and, you know, the results have really kind of scared things, scared people and we're not, we're, they're not holding our hands anymore and helping us to point lines and you know, there's a mud pit over here. I hope he gets in it. So, uh, but again, I think the competition is great. The input of uh, one Cody Webb or, and, uh, and the two uh, Baylor brother, uh, for sure it helps us a lot. It helps us a lot because uh, it can show um, the result that is cap uh, capable to do the bike. So that's it. But enough talking about the past. What's reserved for the brand's future? What are the obstacles Sherco will face? Only future will tell, but we already know a few things. The Euro 5 regulation will definitely be a true test of fire. To meet the criteria, two-stroke manufacturers will need to introduce the injection technology or find similar solutions in order to be able to sell road-legal bikes. But Sherco is already working on that. It's not a big secret, but it's necessary to go to fuel-injected. The limit of that is uh, Euro 5 in 2024. So it's in four years, so we have time. <laughs> the problem is not uh, if we have, we not have. I think all the players on the market, they have this. Maybe on the market or maybe in R&D is uh, when they will introduce it. For a marketing argument to be the first one or the last one or whatever, or because the product is, uh, is better. If you are not the first one to introduce, you must be a good The one. best, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't I have don't that, that card to play, it's okay. So let's just focus on doing something really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have not a big ego. We are the first in four stroke <laughs> to put the injected. <laughs> if, you have not the, if you have not the best product, you not go on the market. So we at that time uh, that the others introduce uh, injected bike uh, were not okay with the technology we had so we say no it's not the time to go on the market the time will come and the truth is that circle still has a lot of room to grow in the off-road segment and not only that one uh, if you analyze uh, it's quite um, without big secrets we are in a trail we are in enduro what are the market that can be interesting mx Maybe MX is for young rider. Uh, it's not the same customer that we have in Enduro that says 35 to 55. Uh, that is uh, wealthy people, CSP plus. But maybe uh, we are already selling. Uh, we are selling more quantity of uh, moped uh, supermoto than trial in terms of quantity. This uh, this market of uh, soft uh, road bike. Uh, we want to do nice products, so we would not like to go to to mass production product or scooter or things like that. So off road, we need to work in a, in this off road. After uh, we never know, maybe we need to go to road one day. When I cannot tell you right now. <laughs> so maybe some uh, little kids off road bikes might be on the on your thoughts. Uh, we need to finish all engine capacity and uh, the, the difference is when you do a kid's bike it's purely in terms of investment you need to make the engine and the cycle parts and this is uh, this is a big cost but there is a big market and uh, there is uh, only uh, kit yemix on this market the others are not present 
so it's something to it's something to check so toma thank you so much for your time uh, it was a, a lovely chat uh, and i think everyone will be really interested in uh, in hearing what you have to say 2020 brings new challenges and the story of Sherco does not end here from now on we'll catch up on the next episodes live and in real time to see what this new decade will bring stay tuned on behind the scenes to discover the untold story of your favorite off-road brands see you next time